Okay, now we're gonna look at an ancient mathematical problem or puzzle that, that we shall see in a minute. Okay, the reason why I like all this is because to solve the problem, it's really great to see how something that we don't think a certain mathematical concept will be used shows its face in such a puzzle. Okay, and the puzzle that we're gonna do today is Buffon's needle problem. Okay, I've named after a guy named uh, Buffon, though I don't know what his work was, but I'll look up, look, look it up and I'll let you guys know. Okay, now the problem is this. We got a floor, okay, we got a floor, and the floor is made of boards which are two inches in width. So, like the floor is here, so the boards are like that, okay, it's two inches in width, okay, two inches. Bear in mind that the floor goes uh, on to, to, you know, infinity, or let's just say it goes on to, to a large enough distance. Okay, and with the floor over here, the problem is that we're gonna drop a needle onto the floor Okay, the needle is 2 inches in width as well, or 2 inches in length, and we want to find the probability that the needle falls and it crosses one of the cracks. Okay, so we got a needle like that, 2 inches, okay, and we're going to just drop it onto the floor, and then we want to find the probability that the needle crosses the crack, such as the example is like this, like this, or like this, okay, and a case where it does not cross the crack is something like that, okay. Oh, yeah, this is crossing the crack, this is not crossing the crack, as long as it crosses the crack. So that is our problem. It seems at first, or at least when I saw it, or when I'm telling you now, that it looks like a probability question. Though I must say that, yes, it does start out as a probability question, but the problem is, it's a bit difficult to analyze it using concepts of probability because of the infinite amount of outcomes that would appear. There are certainly just too many variables for us to, to position the needle or at least to determine an outcome of the needle such as when I trade onto the board. So using traditional concepts of probability may not work, okay? And what the concept that we're going to use, oddly enough, if you think about it, is calculus, okay? And let's just see how it is, okay? Now how the solution works is that I'm going to analyze a single board like this over here and repl replicating the, the, the solution to the, to the whole plane. You'll see why very soon. Okay, so by just looking at a certain board, okay, at a certain board which is two inches in width. So I draw a board like that here, two inches in width here, okay. And what I'm gonna do is that for any needle that drops onto the floor, okay, it will drop on a certain part of the board, right? And what I'm gonna do is that the needle, I'm gonna pick the midpoint, okay, and then I'm gonna define the variable x from the midpoint to the crack here. Okay, now I'm just gonna draw a line over here. Now this is one inch, so I'm gonna divide the I'm gonna divide the um, board into two, one inch over here. Okay, so just by looking at this one inch side, whatever needle that drops, okay, I'm gonna define the variable x to be the distance between the midpoint of the needle. That will mean that it's one inch here, and the the distance between the needle midpoint of the needle to the crack. And after that, because defining x does not cover the whole range of solutions, so I need to define theta as well. Okay? So I hope you can see that by doing this, okay, we can cover all the outcomes that the needle falls onto the floor. Not, okay, yes, it falls onto the board, but onto the floor as well. Why? Because if let's just say the needle falls over here, I will just simply shift the results or shift the coordinates to suit it accordingly. See? x and theta. So by just analyzing one half of the, the board, or at least one or this portion of the board, I can just simply use the probability, probability that I find here, and that would mean that that's the probability of the whole floor, because like I illustrated, every outcome can be, can be shifted to these coordinates, okay? So that, having said that, okay, now what is the condition, or what do we need to write so that the needle falls across the crack? Okay, that's the that's the the what the crux of the problem. Okay, first some definitions or some um, constraints. Okay, x is between zero and one. Okay, I hope you see that one inch over here, so it can either be on this side or on this side. Whatever the case may be, from the crack to the, the midpoint of the needle, it is one inch. Oh, sorry, from the sorry the midpoint of the needle can fall within one inch. Okay, so x is between zero and one inch. Okay, for theta's case, it will be from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, I hope you can see that 90 degrees because the needle will go from here or here like that. Okay, if it goes the other side, we just take theta of the, the other angle, the other opposite angle. Okay, so by looking at this, when would the needle 
go across the crack. Okay, take your time and okay, I will just help you a bit. Okay, by drawing a needle that crosses the crack. Okay, this is the needle that crosses the crack axis over here. Okay, now it seems from this diagram over here, it crosses the crack where this portion, okay, goes obviously goes across the crack, but we can shift that down to the x axis, okay, by using trigonometry, okay, where this would equal to cosine theta, okay, 1 times cosine theta, which is cosine theta, would give us the distance between here and here, okay, the perpendicular from the tip of the needle to the x axis. Likewise, for here, this distance over here is cosine theta, okay, cosine theta, and this distance over here is x. Okay, I hope that's a bit clear. Just refer to the web page if you need a, a more clearer picture. Okay, so the condition that we want, if you were looking at this, or the probability that the needle crosses the crack would be x is less than theta, cosine theta. Okay, I hope you see that. So that's the condition we want. Okay, x is less than cosine theta for the needle to cross the crack. However, this doesn't really tell us much because as we know for questions of probability, we need to find the total amount of outcomes or we need to find the total amount of what we want to happen or divided by the amount of outcomes. For example, let's just say we got a square like that, okay? What's the probability that you'll pick the shaded one? Well, it's 1 divided by 4. So, we need to find a way or we need to at least find the amount of outcomes that's going to happen, okay? So, how, that, how I'm going to do that is that why not I analyze the graph of theta x, okay? So, theta over here, uh, yeah, sorry, cosine theta and x is over here. You see, because x can take an, a range of values from 0 to 1, and theta can take a range of values from 0 to pi over 2, okay? So, just like how calculus deals with continuous variables, it seems that we, to find the amount of outcomes, we will take the area of these two boundaries, okay? However, that's not good enough because we still need to find when the needle crosses the crack, okay? What is the graph of cosine theta? The graph of cosine theta is like that, right? Okay, so by looking at this, if the value of x, if I choose, is over here, right, okay? It will be less than cosine theta if it falls within down here. Does that make sense? Cosine theta is this graph over here, cosine theta, okay? So, x will be less than cosine theta if it falls underneath the graph here like this, like so, for whatever value of x. Likewise, I do the same over here, okay? So, by looking at this, if we want the probability, we will take the area of the, over here, okay, where this area represents x is less than cosine theta, or more, uh, more rightly saying that it represents the outcomes when x is less than cosine theta, okay? And then divided by the total amount of outcomes, which will simply be the area over here, the, how the, the range of values of theta, of, of theta, which is from 0 to pi over 2, and the range of value for, of x, 0 to 1. So probability is equals to integrate 0 to pi over 2 of cosine theta with respect to theta divided by the total amount of outcomes which would be 1 pi over 2 1 times pi over 2 which is simply like that and then using what we know about integration okay it would be equal to 2 pi okay yeah I mean I did that uh, I did that uh, already so this is the probability here and then we have used Buffon's problem or we have used calculus to solve Buffon's problem quite interesting Okay, now I must say this is only ha happens because, like I said, we're dealing with an infinite amount of outcomes. Why is it infinite? Because the theta can be 0 0.1. Sorry, theta can be, let's just say in degrees, it can be 60, 60.1, 60.4, So we need a continuous method, okay? And that is calculus to solve the problem. Lastly, I would like to conclude by saying this. If we were to do the problem as an experiment, so we take a needle, we have a floor, the boards are two inches wide, and we take needles and keep on throwing, the probability that it would land on the that it would land falling across the crack would be k times, if we define k as the amount of times that the needle fall across the crack, divided by n, okay, which is the amount of times that we, we throw the, the needle. Okay? Now, if we write the limit as n tends towards infinity. This means that we just do the experiment, experiment an infinite amount of times, it would give us this one over here, 
2 and pi. Okay? Because we found out using calculus, or theoretically, that's the probability, right? So what we do that we just simply write k is approximately equals to this 2 over pi if n is large, okay? So we can just simply let n, or we just rearrange for pi, and then we would let pi approximately equals to 2n divided by k. And this allows us to find the value of pi in another method, in a method other than wrapping the string around the circle like what my math teacher told me to do. So what we can find from Buffon's problem is that we use a continuous method like calculus to analyze things like when the variables are an infinite amount and we have found out another experimental method to find the value of pi. Quite interesting, Buffon's needle problem. Thanks.